In this video, I show you how I made this layout for the sunset that we saw in Malmo in Sweden using loads of scraps, doing fabulous clusters, using a sketch again which I changed to my own taste and how I did some stitching at the end again. So I hope you enjoy, let's jump into this. Hello everyone, this is Steffi from Little Steffi Big World and welcome back to my channel for another scrapbook layout process video. This is layout number 49 that I did for my Northern Europe trip travel scrapbook album which I've just finished a few days ago and I've shown you the first album and this is one picture when we went on we went from Copenhagen to Malmo and on the first evening we saw the sunset there. So this is in my second album. And because I'm using a sketch again, um, I used a sketch for a few of my layouts. I used one from the first layout that I did. Uh, that process video is on my channel. So I'm using a sketch again from page maps, but I'm changing the sketch quite a bit because first of all, I'm only using one picture instead of two and it's also got a different size. And also I'm placing um, the po photo in a different place. I'm doing the cluster in a different place. I'm doing bigger, bigger uh, banners and stuff at the bottom. So normally I don't show you how I choose the papers because it takes me loads and loads of time. But with this collection from DCWV um, where the paper is color coordinated so I've, I was looking for an orange to match the sunset and I was looking for a, a brown to match the, the point you know the promenade where we were standing so it all came together very very quickly and I'm going through my scraps because this is layout 49 that I did so I already have a lot of scraps from the other 48 layouts that I already did so I'm just going for the colors orange and yellow, blue and brown because they're already in the picture. And I've also included uh, some red just to, to give it a little bit more of an interest, you know, to just give it a little bit of a difference to the picture. Now I'm, I'm just looking for uh, where I want to place the, the brown paper and I have to cut down my 12 by 12 inch paper, 30 and a half centimeters by 30 and a half centimeters down to, um, well, 11 inches by 11 and 3 eighths inches, something like that, or 10 by, yeah, it, because the paper that I'm going to put it later on is smaller than 12 by 12 inches, smaller than 30 by 30 centimeters. So I have a lot of stripes, which you're go you are going to say in a minute. Now I'm cutting um, everything to size, I just need to, to measure where I want to cut that paper and um, yeah just placing the photo as I said more to the left um, in the sketch is more in the middle but because I'm using a different size photo my photos are all the size 4 by 6 inches which is 10 by 15 centimeters almost all the pictures and this makes it easier for me to to get pictures printed as well because it just costs a couple of cents and if I go uh, over and get a hundred or two hundred pictures printed it gets even cheaper so I don't print them at home I get them printed at a nearby st uh, truck store and the delivery there is uh, free as well because during the coronavirus pandemic you don't go to the store and do the touch screen you know getting your pictures printed so I'm just using this red one here as the um, journaling spot. This is where my journaling is going to go. So this is next to the picture. And now I'm just deciding where the scraps are, are going to go below the picture. And I'm just spreading the yellow a little bit. I'm not using the light blue um, in the end at, at the bottom. Uh, I'm just placing this red one instead and the dark blue with the feathers, which I like really, really a lot. So it's this dark blue mainly at the bottom. And I'm just trying to find something that should go in behind that yellow picture that I'm using as a matting, as a frame for the picture. So just so it's, <laughs> you know, the yellow and the orange background. So there's just a little bit of, of a contrast there. 
So I'm cutting um, the pieces down as well um, below and I'm deciding to do a banner for the two red pieces. So this uh, big one as I said is going to be where my title goes and then the red one I'm going to do a little fishtail let's say. I, I don't use any tools to do fishtails, I just cut uh, roughly at, uh, at the middle and then from the edges I'm cutting towards that middle for, um, cut that I did so yeah it goes okay most of the times um, you, you do have tools so you can have an exact angle and a, exactly the kind of banner that you want to use now I'm using some of my scissors my it's actually for kids you know to do uh, rounded corners or doing waves and and zigzags and stuff like that and I use that sometimes instead of having border you know more expensive border punches so I have uh, 10 of them they were in a pack I, we bought them on I don't know Amazon or whatever years and years ago I use them every now and then and for this kind of having different types of banners um, and, and things this is this is great I'm just using my acrylic block which I normally use for my clear stamps to do this um, arrow so it's it's exactly I didn't want it to eyeball this and I'm using a coaster that's on my desk for to you know to put my drink on top to do a rounded corner you know to, yeah to to do a circle half circle I don't have a circle punch as well so I'm, I'm just I do have quite a few tools and, and things, but not too much. I, I try to do this not on the cheap side, but also not on the very expensive side. So I just try to to use, um, yeah, I'm using household goods. <laughs> so I have this little container I've, uh, I've shown you in May, I think, a scrapbook haul, where I bought a sheet of paper from the scrapbook garden, and it's got all this travel themed um, banners and wordings and a little word stuff and so good so I'm just grabbing that it's it's on my desk so I see okay I can I can use it so in the flip of the second album you're gonna see quite a few layouts with this so I'm using some of the banners some smaller ones in between my big ones so it's a very similar to the sketch but instead of doing the cluster at the top left like it's in the sketch I'm doing it at the top right because um, my picture is already to the left and I, I wanted I don't know it felt like some it's too empty at the top right so I'm, I'm doing a cluster over there I'm doing one cluster at the top left of the picture and at the top right of the picture so I've got three places again where I'm doing clusters so it works you know this rule of three or the rule of uneven numbers I try to co incorporate that uh, having um, three or five spots uh, at an uneven angle to each other to to do the clusters so your eye is going in between those three points so it's going to be in between the picture and my journaling going from the three clusters so I'm just uh, using another scissor from um, these 10 kids scissors that I have um, to, to do, a, a, I'm just playing around with, with my scraps and doing a little cluster there and was I, I really like the process actually. It, it looks like I'm struggling but I'm just thinking like okay should I, should I just get, let it go from, from the, the corner you know from the border inside. No I want to have a more of a, of a ticket look and I have to scrap here from the flowers so or because I already have one of these uh, pieces in the layout at the top uh, at the bottom left I'm fussy cutting around this paper to put it in the cluster at the top right so there is some connection between the bottom and this cluster so I'm also using a piece of the dark blue pattern with the feathers there now I'm doing some dots where I need, where I want this paper to go. So when I take everything off, I'm, I'm for gluing it down so it goes exactly where it should go. So I'm normally I do these dots, but in this case, I decide to take my phone and take a picture from the lower part of that uh, layout. So I know when I take everything down to glue everything and you know onto the background that I know where it should go. If you know me just a little bit, you know, I'm a washi tape addictive. I have so much washi tape and I use washi tape on 
every single layout there, there has to be washi tape some somewhere you know so i have this really really light yellow washi tape this is just perfect just perfect for this layout now i'm gluing down a few things here and i just wanted to show you i'm also using uh, some foam dots on this camera which i had stamped and fussy cutted so i'm uh, just elevating this just one millimeter no? just a teeny tiny little bit of dimension for this cluster um i don't want the layouts to get too thick because uh, I know it's going to be a lot of layouts in the end I had 150 layouts for the whole album at the beginning I thought it's going to be 120 and I didn't want it all the layouts to be too too um, thick because I don't want the books to explode if they are a bit chunky that's okay so yeah just a little bit of foam and I'm using the stamping three times yeah I'm stamping the date three times I'm also doing, uh, as you can see here, a foam dots in behind a little arrow, which is from the same collection as the other, you know, the word Wanderlust and um, always take the scenic route. This little booklet here, that's my travel journal. That's what I took with me on the 30 day trip. So you've seen that in my process videos and in my preparation video. And I've said that in my a how to scrapbook video as well you need some sort of journal so you know what happened on each day and i do this i have been doing this for years and years and years in different uh, rarities sometimes small books sometimes i just put it down you know in, in just writing we went to the museum we went to the zoo we ate this and this and that's it but this was a particular um journal for the 30 days so i can remember what we did on day i think this is day um 12 or something or day 11 of the 30 day trip so i'm just putting the word sunspromenade this is the title of this uh, layout because that's the name of this promenade in marmo looking over to copenhagen what i did on quite a few layouts as well is i have this sticker shades where i actually already used the um this actual stickers but in between they're little uh, either circles or triangles or something like that and i'm using that instead of using uh shine you know some uh, people use heidi gold shine or what's what's the name uh, I'm, I'm using this instead so i'm using up scraps from sticker sheets as well so now I'm doing my journaling after having another look at my journal and um, yeah, I'm struggling with my journaling, you all know this, but yeah, that's how it goes. I just wrote a little bit about this picture and once I finished that, you know, once I had almost all my layouts done, I took all of my layouts and did some stitching on them. I, I don't own a sewing machine, so I went to my uh, friend's house and did some stu uh, sewing there as well on a week and I did over 10 hours of stitching. It was quite a lot of fun and <laughs> I'm so glad my friend helped me. It it gives the layouts this fine little small touches which is making them so much more valuable to me. So I hope you enjoyed this. There's going to be um, two more process videos before I show you the flip through of the second album. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want for more travel uh, scrapbook videos, hauls and process videos, flip throughs, everything. Um, just stay safe and scrapbook on. Take care. Bye bye.